We just got some new information on Fire Lord Ozai, so of course I had to explore his character in a video the way I have with so many other Avatar characters. One of the best parts about Fire Lord Ozai's character arc in the original Avatar series is that we didn't see his face until Book 3, making him a mysterious and scary villain that intrigued us from the start. Also, he's voiced by the legendary Mark Hamill, which makes him even cooler. In this video, I'm going to explain Ozai's entire life from his younger years, to his family years, to his time as Fire Lord, and his time after being Fire Lord. All of which goes well past just the original series, with many details added before, during, and after the three books. Now there will be major spoilers for not just the show, but some of the comics, and some other short stories as well, so there's your warning. Before we start, I just wanted to say that I'm going to stop using the YouTube community tab as much as I have been and start using other platforms more so that the Movie Flame brand extends past just YouTube just in case the worst happened and I lost the channel or something. So make sure you follow me on Twitter which is the most important because that will sort of replace the YouTube community tab. I'll be posting the most updates there and that's linked down below. You can also follow us on Facebook, and if you want, you can follow my personal Instagram as well, which is full of cute dogs, behind the scenes movie flame stuff, and just some fun posts. Both of those are linked down below as well. Now, let's get started. Ozai was born into the royal family of the Fire Nation to Azulan and his wife Illa. Ozai watched his grandfather Sozin, and later his father Azulan, rule as the Fire Lord as he grew up, and watching them made Ozai want to become the Fire Lord as well. This however was not very feasible as long as Ozai's older brother Iroh was around, as it was Iroh's birthright. Growing up in the royal family was not easy. Ozai and his brother had to please their elders, something that was nearly impossible given their thirst for ambition and their very high expectations of it. Ozai followed in his elders' footsteps far more than Iroh, and he trained constantly knowing that his father and grandfather were always watching him. From the day Ozai could crawl, the fire in him burned bright. He grew up to be stubborn, impatient, and it seemed like nothing could slow him down. Ozai and Iroh were very competitive, and Iroh even said that Ozai's ambition was greater than his own. They would fight like warriors over games like Pai Shou, where Ozai would grow frustrated, and in fits of rage, he'd flip the board and burn the pieces that flew in the air. At first, everyone dismissed Ozai's fury, saying it was no more than temper tantrums, but his brother Iroh thought differently, worrying it was something much darker. Ozai attended school with his brother, and while there, he showed a ruthlessness that many people, including Iroh, envied. But as they got older, Iroh began to pity Ozai. When they were more mature, Iroh only saw fire and ash in his brother's eyes, and a heart of ice in Ozai's chest. Iroh described their competitive relationship as the thing that destroyed their family bond until all that remained was pain. Each one had to save face with the other, and eventually, this diminished any love their family had once had. Though their family was great, Ozai's father Azulan wanted to make the royal family even greater, and he was told by the Fire Sages that if he paired his bloodline with the former Avatar, Avatar Roku's bloodline, it would create a bloodline that would ensure their family's rule for centuries after they were gone. This was not made easy, however, as Roku had tried to hide his descendants from the royal family, but nevertheless, Azulan and Ozai found them. This brought them to a small Fire Nation town called Hira, where Ursa, the granddaughter of Avatar Roku, lived. When they got there, Ursa wasn't home yet, but they were properly bowed to and invited inside by her parents. When Ursa did come home, she too bowed to Azulan and Ozai, and right away, Azulan was pleased with the way she looked, as she was very beautiful. Ozai was then introduced to Ursa for the first time, and he proposed on the spot. Ursa of course had little choice but to accept, despite the fact that she had no desire to whatsoever, as this proposal bestowed a great honor to her family. As they left Hira, Aikum, a boy who had fallen in love with Ursa as well, stopped their carriage, and as a fight broke out, Ursa begged Ozai to call them off, telling him that he was an old childhood friend, and Ozai obeyed. Ozai then watched his fiancée talk the boy down, and Aikum allowed them to pass. This, however, was not the last time Ozai would think about this boy. When they returned to the Fire Nation, Ozai and Ursa got married, but after their marriage, Ozai showed his true colors. He told Ursa to say goodbye to her parents because it would be the last time she would ever see them, then said that she had to cut all ties from her past, and he finished as he kissed her on the cheek, saying that she belonged to the royal family, and more importantly, to him now. Ozai and Ursa's relationship was not good. Ozai was cruel to her, and Ursa learned to be the obedient wife she had to be. To top things off, Ozai had Ursa watched at all times starting the day she entered the palace, as he knew he could not fully trust her. Despite their problems, the two would go on to have two kids. First, they had a boy named Zuko, and then they had a girl named Azula. Ozai favored Azula by a long shot, and pretty much hated his son Zuko, and was disappointed with him on all fronts. 
This started the day Zuko was born. Ozai was upset because Zuko didn't have the spark in his eyes that Benders have, making Ozai mortified that his firstborn and the Prince of the Fire Nation might be a non-Bender. He planned to cast Zuko away from the palace, but Ursa and the Fire Sages pleaded with him and he furiously agreed to keep Zuko. As it turned out, Zuko could bend, and as could Azula, but Azula was far better, and in turn, this made Ozai favor Azula even more. Ursa, however, favored Zuko, something that might have made Ozai hate Zuko even more than he already did. Ozai was a terrible father, and he let the same thing that happened to him and his brother happen to Zuko and Azula. He did not step in as Zuko struggled to save face in front of Azula, and as Azula constantly bullied Zuko. In fact, he encouraged it. Ozai enjoyed the hate inside of his kids as they went head to head. He could have intervened, but he was too busy cheering on Azula as she bullied Zuko, and moreover, was too busy waging war on the world to even pay his family any attention. Despite Ozai's demand of cutting all ties from her past, Ursa still tried to contact those from her hometown by writing letters, and she entrusted a woman named Alua to deliver them to Hiro. Ozai was one step ahead of her, however, as he had had her watched at all times, and he had Alua file these letters away so that they would never reach her parents or the true love of Ursa's life, Ikum. One day while Ozai was training, however, Alua brought the most recent letter straight to him because after reading it, she thought it was important for him to see it as well. Ozai read the letter Ursa had written to Ikum, and it said that Zuko was not his son, but rather was Ikum's son. Reading this letter bothered Ozai a great deal, but he knew that this statement was incorrect, knowing for a fact that Zuko was his son, not Ikum's. Nevertheless, after reading it, he began to look at Zuko differently, and one day, he glared at his son and wife as he walked past them in the palace. The thing that bothered him more than ever, however, was the man his wife loved so dearly, and he decided to take care of him. He hired a member of the Yuyan Archers, the best archers in the world, to take Ikum's life, saying to find him and rid the world of him. The Yu Yan Archer obeyed and told Ozai that no one would be able to connect the dots back to him, but Ozai told him not to bother and said to tell the dirt stained commoner his demise was personally ordered by Prince Ozai of the Fire Nation. During dinner one night, Azula told Ozai a story about how she set her trainer's pants on fire after he corrected her, and Ozai replied saying that the teacher sounded like a fool and said he'd have to send him to the colonies of the Fire Nation. Azula then called the teacher a dummy, and Zuko argued saying that he wasn't, which made Ozai furious. He slammed his fist down on the table and yelled at Zuko for lecturing his younger sister. He then called Zuko out, saying that despite being a year younger, Azula had mastered 14 more forms than him. He then angrily told Zuko about how he wanted to cast him away when he was young, and said that Azula was born lucky, and Zuko was lucky to be born. This made Ursa stand up and yell at Ozai, but at that moment, Ozai got word that the Yu Yan Archer was back, making Ozai completely forget about the argument with his family. Ozai was informed by the archer that he couldn't track Ikum down as he had left here long ago to live in a forest, and after spending many months in that forest looking for him, the archer told Ozai that Ikum could not have survived. This was not good enough for Ozai, however, and he told the archer that he would give his resignation to the Yu Yan archers, as they were the best of the best, and this archer was no longer the best. Despite the archer begging, Ozai did not turn around or show mercy. Ozai then went straight to visit Ursa, aggressively grabbed her, and called her out for her letter, saying that what she did was treason. Ursa fought back, however, asking how he dare read her private letters. Ozai gave her a menacing look and told her that he would spare Zuko, but then lied to her, saying that Ikum did not share the same treatment. When Ursa desperately asked what he did, Ozai replied, saying that he wiped that treacherous dog from existence, which made Ursa cry. Ursa said that he knew as well as she did that the letter was fake and that Zuko was really Ozai's son, and he snapped saying that of course he knew that because he had people watching her every move since she came to the palace. Ozai then asked her why she wrote it, and Ursa replied saying that she wanted to hurt him even if it was just for a moment. She then said quietly that maybe Zuko not being Ozai's son was just her own wishful thinking. This made Ozai furious, but instead of yelling, he smiled evilly and said that if that's what she wanted, then that's what he'd do. He told her that from now on, every time he spoke harshly to Zuko, every time he hurt him, every time he treated Zuko as if he were the son of Ikum, it would be her fault because he was simply fulfilling her wish. Ozai's nephew and Iroh's son, Lu Ten, ended up losing his life during a battle, and though Ursa and Zuko showed great sadness at this, Ozai was unfazed. In fact, he was actually delighted by this news because he saw it as an opportunity to gain more power. Later that night, Ozai and his family stood before his father, Fire Lord Azulon, and Ozai was very proud as Azula showed off her talent, Azulon even calling her a firebending prodigy. 
However, Ozai became angry when Zuko stood up to show his own talents and failed miserably. Ozai was embarrassed of his son, and was even more angry when Azulon asked Ozai directly why he was wasting his time with Zuko. Ozai then spoke to his father alone, saying that with Iroh's son gone, his bloodline had ended, and he called his older brother weak for abandoning the siege of Ba Sing Se. He finished by saying that his bloodline was still alive with Zuko and Azula, and asked his father to revoke Iroh's birthright and let him take the throne instead. This however made Azulon furious. He told Ozai that Iroh had suffered enough, and Ozai had not suffered at all. Azulon punished Ozai by making him lose his firstborn just as Iroh had with Lu Ten. After Ursa found out about this, she confronted Ozai telling him that he could not do this, but he said that he had no choice. He then said that he was a merciful man and that he was waiting until Zuko was asleep so that he wouldn't feel anything. Ursa refused this however and instead made Ozai a deal. In exchange for Zuko's life, she made him a vial of an odorless, colorless, and untraceable poison to use on Azulon. However, Ozai added one more detail to their agreement, saying that once they made their exchange, Ursa had to leave the capital city and never show her face there again. He did this because now that he knew Ursa could make this poison, he thought it was only a matter of time before she used it on him. Ursa tried to take their children with her, but Ozai refused, instead using their children as leverage, telling Ursa that no harm would come to either of them if she kept up her end of the bargain. He then finished by saying that if she left with the children without him knowing, he would hunt them all down and kill them just as he did with Ikem. Ozai let Ursa say goodbye to her children before she left, and the following day, Zuko ran to Ozai asking where his mother was, but Ozai did not grant him an answer. Ozai used Ursa's poison on his father, and he passed away of what looked like natural causes. Ozai then manipulated the situation to make it seem as though his father's dying wish was for his second son to take his place as Fire Lord, and Ozai took the throne instead of Iroh. Ozai did what he said he would do, and he treated Zuko as if he was Ikem's son, showing no mercy on him. This was especially clear when Zuko spoke out of term in Ozai's war meeting, and Ozai demanded that Zuko duel in an Agni Kai. Zuko thought he was going against the general he had spoke out against, but Ozai surprised him and faced off against his own son. Despite Zuko refusing to fight, Ozai burned his defenseless son's face when he was 5 feet away from him, giving Zuko a scar that he would have for the rest of his life. Iroh later went on to say that this incident proved what they had all sensed, that Ozai was without love. Ozai was disgusted by Zuko's weakness when he refused to fight, and because of this, Ozai banished Zuko and said that he could only return when he had captured the Avatar, a task that seemed impossible as he had been missing for almost a hundred years. Zuko was joined by Iroh on his mission, and Ozai lost a lot of respect for his older brother when he did this. When the Avatar returned in the form of a 12-year-old airbender, Ozai became more aggressive in his pursuit of victory. After promoting Zhao from commander to admiral, he was very disappointed when Zhao failed in his pursuit of the Northern Water Tribe. During this battle, both Zuko and Iroh fought Zhao, and in Ozai's eyes, in doing this, his brother and son had committed treason, and they were now traitors to the Fire Nation. He sent Azula on a special mission to capture Zuko and Iroh, both of whom were to be locked up in the Fire Nation prison. But after Azula failed to do this, she instead focused on a new goal to please her father, and she took over Ba Sing Se, and this made Ozai very proud. With the foe of Ba Sing Se, Ozai was told that Zuko had killed the Avatar, and this made Ozai accept Zuko back home. He now wanted Zuko by his side for war meetings, and he looked to his son for advice when needed, treating Zuko far better than he ever had before. This was the first and only time when Ozai felt proud of his son. With the Fire Nation taking control of Ba Sing Se, Ozai had almost successfully taken over the entire world. In a war meeting with his generals, Ozai learned from Zuko that even though the Earth Kingdom had been officially conquered, its citizens would not accept defeat as long as they had hope. Following Azula's recommendation, Ozai concluded that the only way to end the Earth Kingdom resistance was to use the power of Sozin's comet to completely burn it to the ground just as his grandfather Sozin had done to wipe out the Air Nomads. The day before the eclipse, Ozai realized that this was a dangerous time for him and his people as they would lose their bending ability while the sun was covered. To make sure they were safe, Ozai evacuated the capital city in preparation for the invasion and he himself hid in a heavily guarded underground bunker. While there, Zuko waited until the eclipse started to face his father. He admitted that Azula was the one who took down the Avatar, not him, and he told Ozai that the Avatar was still alive. Ozai became angry and slightly nervous and yelled at Zuko to get out. To his shock, however, his son stood up to him for the first time, refused to leave, and called Ozai out for being a terrible father. Zuko then said to his father that he was going to join the Avatar and help Aang defeat him, which made Ozai laugh. 
As Zuko walked away, Ozai began to mess with Zuko's head, asking if Zuko wanted to know what happened to his mother. Saying this had made Zuko vulnerable, and right as the eclipse ended, Ozai took Zuko's moment of weakness and shot lightning at him. What he did not expect, however, was that Zuko was ready and had learned to redirect lightning. Ozai's own lightning sent him flying back, and as his son escaped, Ozai was more angry than ever. After the eclipse, Ozai waited until Sozin's comet arrived, and when the day finally came, Ozai crowned himself Phoenix King, the ruler of the entire world, and had Azula take his place as Fire Lord. He and his fleet departed for the Earth Kingdom to carry out their plans, and when they reached the Earth Kingdom, they began their attack, but they were quickly met by the Avatar and his team. His team took down a bunch of their ships, and Ozai fought the Avatar one on one. Ozai had the advantage for much of the battle due to the power of Sozin's Comet, but ultimately, Aang overpowered him when he went into the Avatar state. At the end of the fight, Ozai prepared himself for death, but he was shocked when Aang did not give the final blow. Ozai told him that even with all of the power in the world, he was still weak. As Aang was turned around, Ozai tried to go after him, but Aang felt it coming and held him down. He then took Ozai's bending away from him, rendering Ozai defeated both physically and mentally. His forces were stopped, his crown was taken, and as was Azula's, which was then given to Zuko, and Ozai was locked up in the Fire Nation. One day, Zuko went to visit his father and told him that banishing him was the best thing he could have done for him, as it helped him get on the right path, and Zuko thought that the same could be done for his father here. Ozai ignored this, however, and asked why he was there, to which Zuko answered by asking him where his mother was. Ozai only mocked him, however, saying to bring him tea, and then they could talk about it. He then said smiling that he could give Zuko advice on being a good Fire Lord, and then, just maybe, they could talk about his mother. As Zuko began to walk out, saying he didn't need this, Ozai told him that sitting on the throne comes with many pressures, and that those pressures would change him. He told Zuko that he was the only one that could help him, and as Zuko shut the door, Ozai told his son that he would be back. Ultimately, Ozai was right, and Zuko did return not long after that, and he begged his father for advice. Ozai merely told him a story about when Zuko was young, and how he was weak from day one. But when Zuko pushed the conversation away from the story, asking how Ozai slept peacefully at night, despite the pressures of the throne, Ozai told his son that he was tired, and that that was all for today. As Zuko left, he told him to come tomorrow, and to bring more tea, and Ozai was having a great time messing with his son. Zuko came back the next day, and they discussed Zuko not being able to pick sides in a fight. The thing that paralleled Zuko's real life struggles in that moment, not knowing whether to side with the Fire Nation or the Earth Kingdom. Zuko said he should side with the strong, but Ozai surprised him, saying that he could have sided with the weak too, because it doesn't matter who's stronger. What matters is who he chooses, because whoever he chooses, weak or strong, is always the right answer because he's the Fire Lord. What he says goes. Zuko disagreed, however, saying it wasn't just up to him. The other rulers of the world, along with the Avatar, should be involved in the decision-making too. When Zuko said he was meeting with Aang and the Earth King, Ozai told Zuko that he had heard rumors about this meeting, and he told Zuko that the Earth King would turn on them because the Fire Nation had humiliated him time and time again, and he would want revenge. Zuko replied saying that he trusted the Avatar, to which Ozai responded, asking if he trusted the Avatar more than himself. When Zuko did not answer, Ozai became furious with how weak his son was. He stood up and said that Zuko sickened him, and screamed, ordering Zuko to leave his presence. Despite Zuko being the Fire Lord and Ozai the prisoner, Zuko obeyed, and this proved to Ozai that despite being locked up and having no bending, he was not powerless after all. He knew he could keep pulling the strings of those who visited him, and it gave him hope. Zuko later allowed his crazed sister to sit with Ozai, and with his favorite child in front of him, Ozai did not speak a word to her. The first acknowledgement to her being there was when he smiled after Azula made Zuko fall and drop the tea that he had brought them. Azula was promptly chi blocked, but Zuko called them off and decided to give his father and sister another half hour alone together. During this time, Ozai once again pulled the strings of his children, and he told Azula about the letters her mother had written to Aikum, Ozai hoping that Zuko would find the letters saying that he wasn't his father. Finding these letters actually led Ozai's children back to their mother, something that he had not anticipated. And this led to Ozai being confronted by his ex-wife for the first time since he banished her all those years ago. Ozai became angry when he saw her, and he yelled at her, saying that he would fulfill his promise of ending everyone she loved for coming back to the palace, and then added that he would do so much worse to her, and that she would beg for his mercy. Urza did not allow herself to be affected by this, however, and she told Ozai that after all these years, she finally realized just how small a man he was, trying with all his might to be big, that his heart was so small, he didn't have room for a son, daughter, brother, or even himself. 
She then said goodbye to Ozai, and as she walked out, Ozai was shocked and yelled at her not to turn her back on him, but the rest of his words were drowned out as Ursa paid him no mind. The confidence he had felt by pulling people's strings even in prison diminished right after this conversation, and everything that Ursa said about him being a small man became the reality for the rest of Ozai's life. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe. And look out for more great videos on the way.